Archie, first of all, I'm sure you won't mind casting your mind back to a fairly memorable night for yourself in Leicester in October, beating local lad Leon Woodstock. First of all, what are your sort of memories looking back on that night? Um, yeah, it was a great night. It was a great night, one to remember for sure. Uh, it was, like you said, a big build-up, um, and like, we come out with a good win in his own backyard. Would you say it was probably your most complete performance today? I mean, everything seemed to click into place for you. Was it a case of following the game plans of the letter? Yeah, I stuck to my game plan. Um, there's a few things, like I said, after I watched the fight, there's a few things I picked up myself. I'm my worst critic. Um, but yeah, other than that, I thought it was a good performance. We've got a good win now. We've done very well. We was, uh, we was the underdog. And like I said, it was a great night. I remember speaking to you before the fight. You were utterly convinced that it was the right fight for you and you were going to do what you ended up doing. What gave you that total conviction? I'm a great fighter and I believe in my ability. I knew I could beat Liam Woodstock and I did. Um, it, like I said, I, I, I just believe in my, in my ability and I went out there and I've done exactly what I told everyone I'd do. Is it a case of the boxer always overcomes more of a brawler? Yeah, yeah, you can say that, but even I outstrengthened him in the, in the back end of the rounds. I started pushing him back, bullying him. Um, but yeah, I just stuck to my game plan, stuck to my boxing, and I got a, like, a really good win. You look very big in there compared to him. Was that a factor? Yeah, I, do you know what? Everyone kept telling me he was the big fire, uh, he was the big puncher, and he was the big, bigger man, but he, he didn't show that. Uh, I think everyone underestimates how big I am as a super featherweight. How much of a boost to your sort of confidence was that knockdown in the first round? Uh, it was massive. Like, as soon as I got knocked down, I just knew. But I didn't get, I didn't get complacent and rushing or anything like that. I just stuck to what I had to do. And if anything else, I, I just prepared myself because if there was ever um, going to be another knockdown, I know what to do. It was a breakout fight for you in more ways than one because, with the build-up and everything, it was a fight that seemed to have a bit of everything, including the inevitable hostilities. You're not a natural at that, I don't think. So how did you sort of adapt to it? Um, I think I'm underestimated a lot. Uh, as you'll see, my colours will start coming out and seeing what sort of fight I am. Listen, like I say, this Lucas Banning is a nice, respectful boy, and that's how it's going to be. We'll both be respectful for each other, and it'll be a good fight. Uh, you want to push me and start keep podding me, then you'll see, you'll see what'll happen. And like I say, Leon Woodstock had a lot to say, um, but the difference is I backed up what I, what I said I'll do. Did you enjoy it at all? Did you put it down to experience, or was it a bit of trash talking, a bit of to and fro? Of course I enjoyed it, it was, it's all good fun, do you know what I mean? But, like I say, I, I had a job to do that night and I'd done what I had to do. You won the WBO European title, you were quite adamant in the sort of dispatches afterwards at ringside, but you weren't going to entertain thoughts of a rematch. Was there any particular reason for that? Um, well, to be honest with you, I, I watched the fight back, I thought I beat him more than what the judges said that night. Um, it wasn't, I don't think it was a very close fight, I thought it was, a, it was my fight all the way. Uh, I was in his backyard, so he had it all his own way, he was a champion, he had it all his own way. If he was in London and it was a 50-50 fight, then I would probably said, yeah, no worries, it's a good rematch. But it's not, I beat him comfortably in his own backyard and now I move on to the next. Friday, March the 8th is next at the spectacular York, uh, sorry, Albert Hall, Royal Albert Hall, where we are tonight. Do you get a little buzz about the prospect of fighting here now it's back on the boxing landscape? Yeah, 100%. What a great venue. I've never been here before. I've just had a walk around and had a little look and it's lovely. And I'm excited to, and honoured to be able to box here. You're fighting against or defending your title against Lucas Balenco, who's an unbeaten fighter. What can you tell us about him? I don't know much about him myself, to be honest with you. Um, I don't really watch many of my fights anyway. I'll adapt. That's what makes a great fight. I'll, I'll adapt on the night. I just make sure I'm in good shape and I'm doing everything I need to do and I, I stick to my game plans. But I do know, yeah, he's a good kid. He comes from a good boxing family, so it's going to be a great night of boxing. Suggestions are that he's more of a technician, which would be very different from Woodstock. Um, yeah, well, if he's a technician and he's a technician, it'd be a good, like I say, it'd be, a good, it'd be a good fight either way. If he wants to come forward, it suits me more. Um, as you see against Woodstock, the more they come forward, the more I get to land. So. Looking ahead, I mean, there's a lot going on in the super featherweight division. You've got Sam Bowen. He's uh, supposed to defend his British title against Ronnie Clark. That's now not happening, but he's still going on February the 23rd in Leicester. You've got Woodstock on the scene. You've got Zelfa Barrett coming back. Would you like to get involved in that little mix, or do you just want to play your own path? Yeah, I will. Do. 
the fights, the fights will happen. At the end of the day, I've got Lucas Banninga on the 8th of March. I don't overlook any opponent. Um, so that's that's all I'm concentrating on at the minute. Is the 8th of March. After the 8th of March, um, we will look at we'll look at going elsewhere, at other fights. But until then, it's just going to be concentrating on Lucas Banninga. On the subject of Lucas, there is always something special when two unbeaten fighters come together. It just gives it that little edge, doesn't it? Exactly, exactly that. And like I say, I don't, I don't take no easy route. I've had the hard route. I boxed Leon Woodstock, undefeated prospect, uh, and and was the champion, and I beat him. Um, and now they've offered me another fight, another unbeaten prospect, and I said yes to it. Um, so yeah, I, I don't duck and die from no one. Archie, thank you very much. Thanks,